everyone. Welcome to another edition of The Mar Regime. I'm Matt Connerton, and uh, I introduce you to Cheryl Mar, the host of the show. Hi, Cheryl. Hey, how are you doing tonight? Good. How are you doing? Good. Good. Um, I am The Mar Regime. I am um, a product of Cam Productions. Yes. Cam Productions is me. So that makes me a capitalist. Yes. I'm not really sure if that's a good thing. I keep getting told that's a bad <laughs> thing, but I'm perfectly happy saying I'm a capitalist and I'm a Republican. So we're here to, um, today our show is on this parental consent bill that's in t at, at um, Governor Lynch's desk. And he'll either veto it or pass it through. And he has, I think, till 5 o'clock tomorrow to make that decision. We have Ellen Kolb with us today. She's from the Cornerstone Action. And we're going to talk about this bill in detail and talk about parental consent. And I think that, um, you know, we're, we've lost sight of what a parent's role is in the home. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, I've just seen so many um, things that have happened with, with young girls. And this is, a, this is a law about girls. This is not a law about Roe v. Wade and the women's right to choose. This is a law about young women under the age of 18. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about that in just a minute, sure. Ellen. But first I want to talk a little bit, because the Bruins are on tonight, so it's the seventh game, right? I have no idea. You don't know? I, I'm, like, I'm, so, I'm not into sports at all. <laughs> Dude, really? Oh, yep. Really? <laughs> yep, I'm not into sports at all. You know what? I like to play sports. Like, if someone wants to throw a football around, I'm all about it, but I don't like to watch it. I don't like to watch it on hockey, television. I, hockey is, like, the best sport ever. It, and a my, lot bro of, my brother's played hockey, and it, and it is, uh, I love it. You know what I have noticed? A lot of women like hockey. Yeah. I've noticed yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, I can't. I used to like to play hockey in school. Can't watch it. So um, I'm agnostic on the uh, You're agnostic. Bruins. So the other night was the uh, GOP debate. You were there, <laughs> Ellen. Yes, is was. that right? Yes. I heard Michelle Bachman's a very small lady. She's very small compared to the other. She was standing next to the very tall Rick Santorum, but nobody noticed because she was really. Was she on blocks? Took, yeah. <laughs> 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 but, but she really did, did a job bringing the crowd in and participating in the debate like she'd been running forever. Yeah, they, they actually have an article about her today in the paper saying that she's made some really good strides because mm -hmm. of coming out saying she's going to run for president, and, um, and people are really liking her. Very large, state. strong field, and she makes it stronger. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm really excited. But i got to tell you, I really like Herman Cain. Oh, it, I, it's I, I not love to like him. him. Do, do you know who Herman Cain is? I do, absolutely. Yeah. I really like him, and yeah. I, I, I really like Colin Powell, too. He mm -hmm. would have been a great president. I the really believe that. I do. Colin Powell could have been president if I know. he wanted to. If, if, if he, he wanted to. that opportunity. Yeah. 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 I, really, I really liked him, and I like Herman Cain. And honestly, I'm not going to endorse anybody. I just, I'll vote for who I vote for when I go into that mm -hmm. booth. But, and I like to talk about them all. So that's what I'm going to do. So let's get into this bill, shall we? First of all, I brought this. I am advocating or this book, Original Intent. It's by David Barton. Um, and it is a, the original intent of the Constitution, and it's okay. one of the best books that I've ever read. Um, and it gets right into um, what the Constitution was originally um, for us. And um, it talks about being a republic. Remember we talked about being a republic right. last week? Constitutional republic. Yeah, we yep. are not a democracy. Right. Democracy is just one step away from socialism. And I hear people talk about, oh, this democracy that we're in. I'm like, what are they talking about? We're a republic. We mm -hmm. vote people in and out. That's what we do. That's the United States of America. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I want to share with our viewers is, I'm not sure if a lot of people know this, the New Hampshire has a constitution. Did you know that, Matt? I did. You did. I, think all, I think all states do. Or, or all some, states some do, but I'm not sure if a lot of people of really document. realize that every yeah. state has a constitution. And you can get this. You can probably Google it online. But um, I would recommend reading this because when we go off of, when we start swaying from what the original writers intended for us in this state we have got a mess on our hands and um, and I'm here to talk about it and pull things together because I am just amazed at how the law works in this state so um, so let's get into this bill shall we okay all right this parental consent bill notification 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 why don't you share with us a little of your history and who you are and um, what you do. Okay, I'm Legislative Affairs Director with Cornerstone Action. We represent about 6,000 New Hampshire residents. We are nonpartisan policy research. What I do is go to Concord and testify on bills, research bills, work with legislators who'd like to draft things. My principal interest is the life issues. Okay. And that's what brought this bill to my attention. In the many years since Roe v. Wade, the Supreme Court has 
a big body of law that includes the right of parents to be involved. Yes. And it's actually in the New Hampshire Constitution right. that parents should be involved. The they, last time should be. our legislature tried to pass a law like this, it went to the U.S. Supreme Court, and Justice O'Connor said, we're not going to overturn the whole thing. There's one little segment that we're can, concerned about. Can I about. just back that up a sure. little bit? In 2003, um, right. Governor Benson passed the bill through. That's right. He signed it. He signed it. Mm -hmm. It went through, and then there was a big... It was immediately taken to court. Okay and enjoined, so it was never in force. Okay. It took a while yeah. for it to get to the Supreme Court. At that point, they said, this, there's, we're just concerned that perhaps health and safety of the pregnant adolescent hasn't been considered, so let's send it down for review by a lower court. Before that was done, the legislature, which had shifted membership dramatically, repealed it. This is an attempt to write a law that goes right along with what the Supreme Court wants, and that attempts to balance what adolescents now have a right to abort versus a parent's right to be a parent. Can, can we just clarify what the law says? What, what this exactly bill says? Right, what right means, now, yeah. what is the parent, parents do not have to give? Oh, no, there's, there's, there's that, no notification. That's right. Okay. There's, no okay, notification, there's no notification. No okay. involvement at all. So let me ask you this, Matt. If you had a daughter that was pregnant, mm -hmm. let's say she's 15, 16, mm -hmm. would you want to know Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I'm, and, I'm, and I am, uh, for the record, I am pro-choice. Mm -hmm. But I do believe a parent has a right to know. I think it's bizarre that, you know, it, we live in an era where if the school wants to give your child an aspirin, mm -hmm. they need to get the parent's permission. Exactly. But a, a child can go and get an abortion without the parents ever knowing about it. I think that's kind of bizarre. I'm not a parent, but... That seems pretty counterintuitive to me. Yeah. That that would be acceptable to anybody. Well, mm -hmm. a, a child... 18 and under cannot have a tattoo without a right. parent's consent. Right. They can't vote, yeah. obviously. Can't join the military. Right. Can't be treated by a regular doctor. You can't go to the school and drop out of school. Or you, There's so many things they can't do. But they can go have an abortion. They right. can end a life um, right. without parental consent or notification. And That's and sad. And even if you take that part out of it, even if you don't think of it as ending a life, even mm -hmm. if you don't have a problem with that, that on term, a moral issue, yeah. even if you remove that part, it's still bizarre. It's still a medical procedure. Mm -hmm. And, and to, to have, for a child to be able to have any kind of a medical procedure it, without, without needing a parent's consent is very strange. And I, th I think this is the only kind of medical procedure that a child can have without a parent's consent, I would it think. Is sexual tra sexually transmitted disease treatment can be done confidentially. I did not know that. Yeah. But it's interesting that under the terms of the U.S. Supreme Court, Justice O'Connor said when she reviewed the law that was repealed, states have a right to require parental involvement. Mm -hmm. This could have been a consent bill. It's not. It's notification, and it has an exception. If a pregnant adolescent thinks she, that for some reason she cannot involve her parents, okay. she can go. She has, there's what's called a judicial bypass. She goes to a judge. And still, this bill attracted tremendous opposition mm. when it was heard. Well, what I'm hearing a lot on Facebook and you know, mm -hmm. other people that I talk to is that it's a woman's right to choose. And this is what bothers me. Mm -hmm. 18 and under, they're not women. They're girls. They're not women. Right. They're kids. And they're, they are yeah. children, and they need their parents. And, you know, whether they want to believe that or not, because I've had, um, I have four of my own, <laughs> and my oldest, you know, she is very independent. She does what, you know, she's very strong-willed. But still, I'm her mother. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, this is where I get really, um, and it makes are, me actually, you know, really irritated. There are two rights here that are trying to be balanced. Yeah. One is the right established by Roe v. Wade, and the other is the right of a parent to know when their child is undergoing mm -hmm. some kind of medical procedure. Yeah. And nothing in this bill can stop an abortion. Nobody has veto power. Sure. Not at all. This is entirely consistent with Roe v. Wade. You know, 12 people co-sponsored this bill. That's a lot of co-sponsors. Yeah, and I don't, yeah. I don't think there's anything else you could get those 12 particular people to agree on. Mm -hmm. But they came together on this because they recognized that it's common sense, it's based in the real world, and it's a way of making sure New Hampshire respects parental parents, involvement. parental involvement. So I'm going to actually read, okay, the, the sponsors of this bill is Representative Sousa, which I've seen her a Kathy lot in the newspaper. Kathy Sousa of Manchester. Yep, okay, I've seen her a lot in the newspaper. Um, Representative Kapler, mm -hmm. um, Representative Bates, 
representative, and if I say names wrong, you can correct me, no that's fine. <laughs> Sabrowski? Yes. Okay. Um, representative Groen, mm -hmm. right? Representative Krogowski? Chris, Chris Krasuki. Chris, 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 Krasuki. Krasuki, okay. Mm -hmm. Representative Parrison, Representative Murphy. Of Manchester. Of Manchester, and here we are in Manchester. Mm -hmm. Representative Seidel and Senator Barnes. Senator White and Senator Groen. Yes. Okay. So let's just review this. Um, I'm going to kind of break it out. This is an act requiring parental notification before abortions may be performed on unemancipated minors. Now let me just stop there. Mm -hmm. There is no law in New Hampshire that a minor can be emancipated. Yeah. There, I, there is nothing I there that I know because I tried it when I was a teenager. <laughs> yeah, you did? <laughs> I, yeah. I didn't get very far. <laughs> did you really? I was shut down pretty quick. Did yeah. you really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. You know, you, okay. Were yeah. you like a, just a, trying to get away from mom and dad? Yeah, or? I was just I was just an idiot who thought <laughs> that I understood the world, and yeah, it was it was foolish. It was completely foolish. I, I I had great parents. I it was me being stupid. Well, it's just being a teenager. That's the whole point. Yeah, we're, we're teen. You know, when they're teenagers. Yeah, okay, so yeah. there is no law that says in New Hampshire, mm -hmm. and I just think this is just one way to help somebody else on the left bring in a law. To emancipate minors. That would be another. The, the, it's just the, the terminology just consider. says, you know what? Now they're going to try to pass a law to help teenagers get emancipated because they think they're adults and mm -hmm. they, they can handle life on their own without parents. That's just it's my take on just reading that. Mm. I hadn't okay. thought about it. From my that humble angle. opinion. Yeah. All right. So be it enacted by the Senate and House Representative General Court convened. Number uh, the legislative purpose and findings. One, it is the intent of the legislator enacting this parental notification provision to further the important and compelling state interest of protecting minors against their own immaturity. Now that, I know that there's a lot of people on the left who are like, they're not immature. <laughs> if they're having sex, then they most certainly are mature enough to make that decision when we all know that they're not. Okay, so fostering the family structure and preserving it as a viable social unit and protecting the rights of parents to rear children who are members of their household. Perfect. Mm -hmm. The legislator finds this fact that immature minors often lack the ability to make fully informed choices that take account of both immediate and long range consequences. We got a phone call. We have our first call. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Hi, welcome to the Mar Regime. Who's this? Hi there, on the emancipation. Yep. That's a familiar yeah, voice. A <laughs> uh, guy that is said now that had a lawyer. And he went to court on that. He got emancipated for his wife for his family about uh, four years ago. No kidding. Well, yeah. how how old was he? He was sixteen. Really, in New Hampshire? Yeah. I think I do remember hearing something about this. It must have been an extreme case. For yeah, it, to happen, it probably was an yeah. extreme case. And why not to these children once you become emancipated? Does the government pick up their their um, their living expenses? And all this other stuff, but do they go on their own? I think they're on their own. Survive? They're on their own. Yep, they're on their own. I actually met a girl um, a f couple months ago that um, was on her own at 15. No but I don't think she was emancipated. She just was able to get out of the home and get yeah. her own apartment and start mm -hmm. working. And, you know, it is possible, but it doesn't mean that you have to be emancipated. Right. You know, you can yeah, it wasn't safe, though, because her, the, guy, the kid's father or a uh, foster father or whatever was a lawyer and he helped her get emancipated so that he could make a decision of who he wanted to be adopted by. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We're, okay, yeah. thank okay. you very much. Thanks, Norm. Yeah, bye-bye. Okay. Bye -bye. All right, so the second one is the medical, emotional, and psychological consequences of abortion are serious and can be lasting, mm -hmm. particularly when the patient is immature. Mm -hmm. We're not going to get into that yet. If, if we need to, we will. The capacity to become pregnant and the capacity for mature judgment concerning the wisdom of abortion are not necessarily related. Perfectly worded. Mm -hmm. Parents ordinarily possess information essential to a physician's exercise of best medical judgment concerning the child. A very important point. That's a ve It's so important. If uh, a young woman has a medical condition that the provider doesn't know about, uh, the parents can provide a complete medical history. Not every adolescent is in a position to provide a complete medical history. It can True. be very intimidating yeah. Yeah. to t talk about things and like that. And some things could be embarrassing for her. That's right. Th yeah. However, if she's going to undergo either a surgical or chemical procedure to terminate a pregnancy, you need to have a full medical history in order to determine that that procedure is appropriate. Here's mm -hmm. a question. <coughs> Are they doing full medical histories on these girls that are having abortions? During the legislative hearing, we were assured by representatives of abortion facilities that yes, they were. 
there is no audit of that that I'm aware of. Okay. Okay. Parents who are aware that their yeah, parents who are aware that their minor daughter has had an abortion may better ensure that she receives adequate medical attention after the abortion. Very important. Mm. Very yeah. important, particularly with the risk of hemorrhage. Um, if a parent is not aware that the daughter has undergone a procedure, you wouldn't know where this was coming from. Obviously, if you know there's been an abortion, you'd understand medical intervention is necessary immediately. Absolutely. Immediately. Right to the ER. That's right. Exactly. You don't and, waste time. And I don't think that a young woman would, because of the fear, mm -hmm. would run to an ER. That's right. Yeah. I agree. Um, the legislator further finds that parental cons cons consult Consult consultation is usually desirable and in the best interest of the minor. That is one point that we agreed on, all those who were in the room. In fact, uh, those who were representing uh, abortion facilities said about three-quarters of the pregnant adolescents who come through the doors bring a parent with them. Mm, mm. Really? They're concerned about the other 25 percent. Right. Okay. But they do say that a majority of young women already a pregnant adolescence. In New Hampshire, we're just talking that. New yes. Hampshire. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So about three quarters of the girls walking into Planned Parenthood, that's right. that what you're saying, have a parent with them. That's right. And then 25 percent. Give Approx me those they, numbers Now, again. again, these are the numbers that we were given. There were representatives of Planned Parenthood of Northern New England and the Feminist Health Centers, okay. which are the freestanding facilities where most of the abortions in New Hampshire are performed. They said about three quarters bring a parent. Of the remaining 25 percent, about half bring another family member mm. or a trusted adult. Okay. Which leaves 12 to 13 percent who, for one reason or another, believe that they cannot involve a family member. And what do we do with that? I mean, what, we talked about this before mm -hmm. the show. Current law says, okay, you don't want to involve a family member. Here you go. Mm. You request a procedure. We shall do it. Um, if a young woman is, has been abused, pregnant through rape, perhaps pregnant through incest, if there were ever a need for state intervention in a dysfunctional family relationship, that would be the time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And oh, yeah. instead, currently, this is the time where the state is being told, nope. nope. And see, this that's quiet. Some, this is there is a, a law yeah. that mandates report, that's reporting. Right. So the fact that they're not reporting, that 12% that mm -hmm. are saying, I can't go home and tell because I'll get beat up, or it's my dad, or it's my brother. I'd or, like to see know, documentation. I'd like to see that right. as well. Happening. Right, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Hi, welcome to the Mar Regime. Who's this? This is uh, Representative Harper. Hey. Hey, how you doing? What's up, Gary? How right. are you? Good. Hey, how you doing? Good. Hey, I just wanted to share a story that uh, um, when I was at a spaghetti dinner at church one day, I talked to a lady who uh, was a nurse at a hospital, and the, <clears throat> the um, lady was talking about a a uh, young girl that got an abortion at the hospital where she works at and the young girl went home and started hemorrhaging in the middle of the night mm. and she got so scared she finally told her father her father was actually a, a surgeon at the hospital but he was completely unaware of his daughter's uh, abortion mm -hmm. and her life he almost lost his daughter wow. because of the uh, lack of knowing what was going on with her. So that, that's one reason I actually co-sponsored, uh, my first term in office co-sponsored uh, a parental notification. So I Thank just wanted to uh, throw my oar in the water. That's no, all. I appreciate yeah. that, um, Representative Hopper, because, Gary, um, because we were talking about that before the show as well, that, um, that having... This kind of a situation where mm -hmm. if dad knew or if mom knew, they would completely support, but they That's didn't. Right. But they don't know. That's right. And so here she well, is. There's also, there's also the problem with uh, young girls like that going through a procedure like that will often become suicidal afterwards. Yes. Oh, sure. If the parent yeah. doesn't know they went through the process, it's they a very know lonely time. What was going on? Mm -hmm. So keeping parents in the, well, in the dark I'll tell you what, is, is insane. Planned Parenthood says here that um, there's no, no psychological problems or regrets two years after the abortion. That's on, on their little thing on their website. And, you know, I'm thinking two years in a day, would that work for him? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> right. You know, maybe five years from then everyone, from after having an abortion. Different. You know, everyone's yeah. different. So for them to make that, no regrets for two years after. 
Well, if you've got a 14 year old that gets pregnant, has an abortion, so by the time she's 16, she might have regrets. It's weird. It's, it's, I, I, I mean, come on. It's almost like they're talking about. It sounds like they're talking about a warranty on something. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and even if we take that claim well, the whole at face value, it's all you know. It's all you know. You got to you know, remember who's making money off this. So, right. All right, Gary. Well, thank you. Thanks, Gary. Okay, thank you. All right, we'll talk to you soon. You too. too. Bye, bye. All right, so let's get to the definitions. Good, good point that he brought up, and that's Representative Hopper yep. from where? Okay. I like him a lot. Yeah, he was here last week. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Um, number one, abortion means the use of prescription or any instrument, mm -hmm. medicine, drug, or any other substance or device intentionally to, deter to terminate the pregnancy of a female known to be pregnant with an intention other than to increase the probability of a live birth to preserve the life of, or health of the child after live birth, or to remove an ecto... ecto mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying. Pregnancy. Sorry. Pregnancy or the products from the spontaneous miscarriage. Okay. Commissioner means the commissioner of the Department of Health and Human Services. And I'm going to ask you, what does this mean? When the... A any law that goes into effect like this, mm -hmm. uh, the Department of Public Health will have an interest that's under Health and Human Services. Okay. So when it refers to the commissioner, it just means that's the part of state government that is most likely going to be. Okay, so um, then they'll start doing this. statistics and, and keeping well, track. And I actually, mean, honestly, statistics it's, it's, is a separate thing, and I'm hoping to see a bill next year that will address that because right now, all of these statistics we're working with are being provided by abortion providers. The state does not collect statistics. The numbers that the state sends to the Centers for Disease Control for a, its annual report are voluntarily, they, they are on, collected on a voluntary basis mm -hmm. by providers. There is no state statistical uh, really? mandate. So anytime we deal with statistics on this, it's real fuzzy. Yeah. It's real fuzzy. There's a potential for a conflict of interest. And the there. individual <laughs> girl gets lost. She's not a statistic. She's right. a person. Absolutely. She's a member of a family. And it's very easy to get for that fact to get lost in claims like, well, there, there's no after effect to abortion for at least two years. Well, what about the 14-year-old who's pregnant now today? We have an interest in fostering a relationship with the parents, Absolutely. not in saying, look, let's take care of this in, pri in secret. Mm -hmm. There's and a difference between privacy it, and secrecy. And mandate it and make right. it a secret and she can't tell until right. maybe she's older. You know, however. Each of these young girls has a story, has a problem, and has a right to her family. Absolutely. Absolutely. Before um, Gary Harper called in, we were talking about uh, mandating. Um, if Planned Parenthood knows that 12% of these girls are saying, I cannot tell. Mm -hmm. I cannot go to my parents. I cannot do this, that, or the other because of abuse. Mm -hmm. They should be reporting. They're mandated reporters, are they, they not? That's right. They assured us at the hearings regarding this bill that they did report, but again, if the state is not checking, I would like to know how many reports to the DCYF were made. I have no way of finding we, out how, except we we by them telling us. So we can't find out. We cannot go to DCYF That's and right. get that information. And we're not looking for personally identifiable information. Right. We just want to know, were there reports? Interesting. Because otherwise, there again are these individuals, each with a story, getting shuffled aside. And these, right. these are these are, are girls that need is, intervention. Sorry. If, and if this is, they're in that kind of a home, mm -hmm. then why is there intervention from the state? That's when the state needs to come in and do intervention. That's right. The, you know. That's right. Okay. So then it says emancipated minor means any minor female who has, who is or has been married. So she may get married at yep. 16, so she now is emancipated. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where that comes in. Guardian means the guardian or conservator. Appointed under RSA 464A for pregnant females. Can you explain to me what that means? Uh, to the best of my understanding, that means if someone has been named by the court to stand in lieu of a parent. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then we have minor means any person under the age of 18. Oh, my gosh. There was. Did you know that that's what that means? There was a, an attempt. <laughs> I thought it was someone who uh, digs for coal. There was an so. attempt in the Senate to amend that to make it 17 and under. But the rest of the really? senators said, you know, if we start messing with the definition of minor, we yeah. really are opening a can of worms. So, right, 18 yeah. is what's but in the Do you bill. remember, like, wasn't like 30 years ago, 18 year, you could be 18 and drink? Oh, yeah, I when mean, I was in college, like, so which I'm they, dating myself here, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, that, that was the drinking age. Okay, that's I thought, and then it moved up to 21. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> or else you lose the highway funds, but that's another show. <laughs> we'll do another <laughs> show. Such a tangled web. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we just keep weaving. Okay, so parent means one parent of the pregnant girl if one is living or the guardian or conservator if the pregnant girl has one. 
Medical emergency means a condition that, on the basis of the physician's good faith, clinical judgment so complicates the medical condition of a pregnant woman. Why, you know, they're saying this pregnant is woman, the key. This is pregnant, pregnant girl. This section this that you're woman. reading is the key that was rewritten, redrafted since the last bill in order to accommodate the court. So go ahead and, okay, and look I mean, at that. To that, me, that just that that's girl. The key of it. She's not a woman. Um, as to necessitate the immediate abortion of her pregnancy to avert her death or for which a delay will create serious risk of substantial and irreversible impairment of a major bodily function. Wow. I mean, that's imminent harm. That's right. If the, if the girl is in imminent harm, and, I'm, and I mean girl, each, she's not a woman. Each word in that section was sweated over and chosen really? to accommodate what the Supreme Court has said is legal. Wow. But why did they use the term woman? I mean, that is to make it consistent with other laws that no. address abortion for minors. And okay. I, I agree with you that a minor female, under terms of the law, She's girl called. is appropriate. Young woman? But you could say young woman. Mm hmm Okay. All right, so notification required. No abortion shall be performed upon an, an emancipated minor or upon a female for whom a guardian or conservator has been appointed pers pursuant to RSA 464A because of the finding of incompetency until at least 48 hours after written notice of the pending abortion has been delivered in the manner specified in paragraphs 2 and 3. So let me read those and then we're going to talk about that. Uh, number 2, the written notice shall be addressed to the parent at the usual place of abode of the parent and delivery, delivered personally to the parent by the physician or the agent. Okay, hold on. So what they're saying here is the girl can go to Planned Parenthood Mm -hmm. And then Planned Parenthood has to notify the parent within 48 hours? That's correct. Why doesn't the young woman do it herself? This you see, I mean, that would be a real, if I was, let me just do a scenario. Sure. If I was a young woman, okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to go, uh, okay, I need, I need you to tell my parents, well, for that 48 hours, I wouldn't want to go home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. Right. I would not want to go home. Right. Let's think about this. Right? right? Yep. Okay. In lieu of the delivery required by paragraph 2, notice shall be made by certified mail addressed to the parent at the usual place of abode of the parent with return receipt requested and with restricted delivery to the addressee. I can't even imagine a parent getting a notice like that. I like, I'm going to sign for something from Planned Parenthood. I, 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 <laughs> what is this? I was thinking about that, too. It's a little different than getting something from Publishers. That's right. Isn't it? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I think, it, I think it maybe deserves a phone call. I think it deserves you know? a phone call, but I know this is... This is what's right. Yeah. They, they sweated over this, I understand, yeah. but... Remember, this is the product of 12 very different legislators doing... Th this is what compromise looks like. Okay. This is what legislation yeah. for the real world looks like. <laughs> um, this is a law... What is that, that for the real person? <laughs> interesting. Mm. But th Seriously. Th th this, is, this is the kind of legislation that's written to try to build bridges between people sure. who call themselves pro-choice and who call themselves pro-life. Mm. Well, look at it. Roe has Roe is the law, like it or not. Mm -hmm. But if you accept Roe and don't like the case law that's been built up on it, the case law that includes parental notification, are you pro-choice or are you pro-abortion? Mm. It's something to stop and think about. This was not designed to challenge Roe. Okay. It's to, it's to take care of our young women. That's right. Yep, that's, that's right. right. It's, it's to take care of our girls in this state. Mm -hmm. Okay. Waiver of notice. No notice, sh notice shall be required under RSA 132.33 if the attending abortion provider certifies in the pregnant's minor medical record that a medical emergency exists mm -hmm. and there is insufficient time to provide the required notice. I'm just not sure why a phone call couldn't be made, but, again, they did the best they could with that's what right. they could yeah. do. Um, Oof. The person or persons who are entitled to notify, to notice, certify in writing that they have been notified. This is where we get into the judge, I think, yeah. Yep. Okay. The judicial bypass. The judicial is, is bypass. Very, uh, all, all of the details. This is interesting. Really? Go okay. into, you know, what, what the court has okayed. Okay. So, go ahead. If such a pregnant minor elects not to allow the notification of her parent or guardian or conservator, any judge of a court of competent, now this is what I think is funny, of competent mm -hmm. jurisdiction, mm -hmm. You know, the state of New Hampshire is really messed up with their laws. I'm not really sure there's a competent jurisdiction anywhere <laughs> in New Hampshire. I'm just, you know, being opinionated here. But 
Okay, upon petition or motion and after an appropriate hearing, authorize an abortion provider to perform the abortion if said judge determines that the, the pregnant minor is mature and capable of giving informed consent to the proposed abortion. So basically what this is saying that this young woman can go to a mm -hmm. judge, let's just wrap this up, can go to a judge and say, I'm mature enough to make this decision. Mm -hmm. The judge can take three minutes with her and say, yep, she's fine, and stamp it. The, right. judge is, the judge is not required to ask, well, what's the problem here? Really? How did you become pregnant? He is not obliged, or she, is not obliged to make any inquiry as to what's behind this petition. His only mandate under that law is to determine is she competent to make mm -hmm. her own decision. And again, that's another opportunity to assist girls Families. who are in crisis. But it just, again, gets, swept under it the just gets swept aside again. Okay. But they did the best they could. Wrap they them. certainly yeah, did. I understand. They certainly okay. did. What do you think about that? Mm. The it's judge. Uh, I mean, just having a judge make that decision, and he doesn't have any requirements to ask questions like, "Where's Where's your family?" I mean, I would think a right. caring judge mm -hmm. would. But some don't. Some don't care. You know, we, we can, that there are other states where a law like this is in effect, and there may be as many stories as there are states. But I know in Massachusetts, our neighbor to the south, there's been a parental, uh, a parental notification law for many years. Uh, the stop in court has become routine. Tell us quick. about that. We were talking about that before yeah. the show. Mm. Tell, us, tell us about that. I was uh, talking a couple of weeks ago with a former employee of Planned Parenthood in Greater Boston. and. There was no gotcha. There were no cameras rolling. She knows what I'm doing, she, and I knew what she does. And I asked her about that, and she said, it's a service we provide our clients. We would drive the young woman to the court. It would be a very quick, routine, expedited hearing. Get the signature, drive her back. Parents would never know that she was missing. We could pick her up from school, take her to court, bring her back. Service to clients, indeed. <laughs> Unbelievable. It was part of the business model. And where taxpayers are paying for this. Yeah. It's sad. Okay. So then it goes into the judge's findings and all of mm -hmm. this other. Um, an expedited confidential appeal shall be available as the Supreme Court provides by rule to any such pregnant minor for whom the court denies an, an order authorizing an abortion without notification. The court shall make a ruling within 48 hours from the time of docketing of the appeal. An order authorizing an abortion without notification shall not be subject to appeal. Um, also, when they're in the courtroom with this, they can get a, a lawyer. That's right. They if can have a court appointed attorney. They can have a court appointed wow. attorney. Um, she that we're bringing her own. Right, public defender. Yeah. Right, yeah. right, mm -hmm. right. Okay. Um, the Supreme Court shall make rules to ensure that procedures followed in the appeals process are handled in an ex expeditious manner. And the reason it has to be expedited is because they're, they want to end the pregnancy within the time frame. Correct. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's three months? Is that, I don't know. I um, honestly no, I don't know how, how long you can go. Oh, it, well, there, there's no restriction on time for abortions in New Hampshire. As a practical matter, uh, I don't believe there's anyone in New Hampshire who does third mm -hmm. trimester. And most of the freestanding facilities would prefer to keep it to 12 weeks or so. But, but in theory, the, late terms are illegal? Oh, oh yeah, there, yeah. There is no such thing as an illegal abortion in New Hampshire. Okay. If Roe v. Wade were overturned tomorrow, we'd have our state laws, which is to say no sure. law. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Um, and we were talking about this before as well. There are girls that come up here from Massachusetts oh, sure. to get an abortion mm -hmm. because they have to have parental consent in Massachusetts or notification. I am not certain right now. I should know that, and I don't. But the point is New Hampshire provides an opportunity to get around the whole thing. No one needs to be involved, not family, not court. So they can just come up and, mm -hmm. and do that or yeah. come down wherever mm -hmm. what state they're That's in because right. we're right here. Hmm. And I would think that they would have to show that they're residents of New Hampshire. No, but no, no, no. You don't have to do that no, because it's all anonymous, right? Well, it, and they none, 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 none of these facilities has a mandate to serve only residents of New Hampshire. Oh, okay. So anyone who comes through the door okay. and requests the service. All right, and um, to finish up the bill, mm -hmm. um, an act requiring parental notification before abortions may be performed on emancipated minors. There is no um, fiscal note for this bill at this That's time. right. So we have no idea how much this is going to cost us. That's is right. Is that correct? That's right. Okay. And again, and what, we're, we're told that a relatively low number of young women are involved here, but that dodges two points. One, again, if you're one of those young women, 
<laughs> it matters to you. And second, I'm relying on someone to give me these figures who has a financial interest in uh, providing the, the procedure. Do we have any idea? I'm, I'm just curious how many uh, abortions of how many minors have abortions in the state every year? I mean, do we have any kind of numbers like that? It was uh, several hundred. I, w I will not give a, a definite figure. I would yeah. need to go back to the um, to the report. I believe Planned Parenthood of Northern New England in their annual report um, says how many of the procedures they yeah. do. And they're very quick to tell us it's only 3% of what we provide. Well, again, you're trying to hide an individual behind a statistic. Yeah. But also, this is something else I learned from a former employee, is um, if a young woman comes in and gets uh, a birth control prescription, suppose she gets 12 packets, that that's goes down as 12 encounters. She gets an abortion, there's another encounter. So even though they've seen one person, the percentage of encounters that are abortion is fairly small. You know, the statistics, huh, it, it's a separate issue. The statistics yeah. are so slippery. Yeah. And, you know, and, I just and we're being asked to make public policy on the basis of these. Right. But still, here we are. Right. And here we are, very, very close to enacting this again. We are literally and this is on less than 24 hours. Desk right now. Yeah. He has till 5 o'clock tomorrow night to make a decision. That's in right. Fact, if you want to call the governor's office, you can do that. What is the number up there? You can go right online, nh.gov. Okay. On, on the um, home page. You can click on a link to his office. It also provides the telephone number. But nh.gov, or uh, go to, if you don't have a computer, go to your local library, or you can call them, and they will give you the Do number. Do you know the number off the top of your I head? I don't. It I begins with 271. <laughs> and when, that's it. When, the when governor's office is 271. When does he have until? I believe Tomorrow, he 5 o'clock. He, he has five, five days from the time it gets to his desk. Okay. It got there late Thursday. Do we, do we know any buzz as far as what he might do? Um, there's no buzz. Uh, yeah. I looked. There's no yeah. buzz. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I, if I had to put money on it, I would bet on a veto. However, yeah. who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Because there was a good faith effort by the drafters of this bill to address his concern, which was the safety right. of the young woman. And that was right along with what the Supreme Court asked to be reviewed. That's been addressed here. This is what House Speaker, this I think went on... This went online, I think, when the bill went on mm -hmm. his desk. And House Speaker O'Brien says, The responsibility of parents to direct the upbringing of their children is fundamental, and we should not be infringing upon that natural right. Mm -hmm. That's actually in the Constitution. It's just kind of reworded yeah. if, you, if you read the, mm -hmm. the different parts in the Constitution. Granite staters believe in more parental involvement on this difficult matter. It is irrational, inexcusable, and ideologically driven intrusion on parental responsibilities that New Hampshire should allow a minor child to undergo an invasive surgical procedure without first informing a parent. It is particularly absurd when we consider that a child can't even receive an aspirin in school without consent. No, Didn't the, you just say that? That's the point that I was uh, making, okay. yeah. We hope the governor will sign this common sense bill to support pr parents' rights. I mean, what else is there to yeah. say? You it, know, I, it is a common sense okay, piece of Okay, we're going to talk about because I was up at the Senate um, no. hearing no. with you. I didn't meet yeah. you that day, but you were yeah. there. That's th that's funny. And it's interesting to see how that that argument was received by some of the Republicans and Democrats in in Congress. Yeah. Um, you would expect that uh, something like this, this is the majority leader talking, mm -hmm. uh, would be able to round up a lot of support from within his own party. Well, we're going to talk about that. In the yeah. We've got 19 minutes, and I'm yeah. reading off some names that did not vote for this. Republicans and that did not vote for this. And this is very through, important. And I'm reading them to call them out. Let me tell you that the, the day the vote was cast, yeah. we need two-thirds in each House to be a so-called veto-proof mm -hmm. majority. The day it was voted on in the House, there was a two-thirds majority, but that was with 40 people missing. Wow. If every legislator shows up on veto day, we need 12 more to sustain a veto. Yeah. So this is, I've, I've talked to many people who said, oh, thank heavens, we're, this is finally going to happen. And I have to say, complacency is the last wow. thing you yeah. want yeah, here. No, 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 no. Um, 40 yeah. people didn't show up. That's right. Yeah, let me, wow. that's I'll right. show you the, the roll call. This yeah. is the roll call right here, not voting. Wow. I'll go through there. And I'm, these are the Republicans that voted against this bill. And I'm going to read their names on air. Yeah. Okay? Because that's, the constituents need to know who they have up there in Concord working right. for them. Because I'm telling you what, if you vote a Republican and you're going to think that that Republican's going to vote yeah. to, to preserve families. And I don't know anyone who's indifferent on this issue. I would think that no, no. matter where you fall on this, you'd want to know if your representative isn't showing up. Right, absolutely. And, and not show I actually don't have, I have their names, but I didn't mark them. But my, uh, 
If we have time, I'll read them. All right, I just want to read what Benton Court said here. With the passage of this legislation, we have reaffirmed our strong belief that parents should have the right to know what is going on in the lives of their minor children. Restoring parental notification, I mean, I know it was passed by, mm -hmm. by Governor Benson, but really, it never even went in, into right. practice. So That's restoring right. it, this is kind of a new thing for us. Restoring parental notification was one of the key items on the House Republican agenda, and I urge the governor to show his support of New Hampshire parents by signing this bill into law, said Bentoncourt. And then um, Senator Groen, this important bill acknowledges the primary role parents play in the lives of their children and emphasize the importance New Hampshire legislators place on the family unit. In a state where parental permission is regularly required for a minor to receive Tylenol or aspirin at school, right. <laughs> <laughs> the Senate deems it even more important that parents to be notified before their minor, minor child has an abortion. <coughs> Excuse me, a major surgical procedure that can have long-term physical and emotional consequences. You know, and we can revisit this about yeah. the, the things that happen mm -hmm. after that kind of a um, procedure to protect minors who believe they are unsafe. Notifying their parents till this bill, this bill contains this carefully written judicial override that is based on a Supreme Court's recommendation. Now, um, in Ayot. A A v. Planned A Parenthood. Versus yeah. Planned Parenthood. And she went down? She personally argued this case when she was our Attorney oh, General. Kelly Ayotte? Yes. Yeah. The, the court, uh, the state would have had to send somebody to argue. Sure. She chose she to do did. that herself. Good yeah. for her. Good for her. All right. And um, what I'm going to do now is <laughs> I'm going to read off the roll call. I'm going to do the House first, mm -hmm. and then I'll do the Senate, um, because you and I are at the Senate hearing together, yes. and I was floored by what... Um, Senator Stiles was saying, and she's a Republican woman, and I sat there and I couldn't believe what this woman well, was saying. I'm curious what the rationale of these people is. I mean, I know that a lot of pro-choicers, their, their issue, and, and again, I, mm -hmm. I'm pro-choice myself, yeah. but I don't, I don't agree with their rationale. They don't want any kind of anything that they frame as restricting abortion in any way because That's they feel right. like it's a slippery slope. That once you introduce something like parental notification, from there, you know, next thing you know, Next thing you know, Roe v. Right. Wade is overturned or something, which is ridiculous. I can that's tell you not that, going to happen. Well, that's, that's one objection that's made. Yeah. Another one is you can't legislate parental communication. That was what Senator Stiles was on. That's a bizarre what did she t what, what was she saying again? Because um, I couldn't she get She said she agonized over this, which uh -huh. came as a surprise to me because she voted against parental notification when she was in the House a few years ago. But so she, she agonized. agonized over this, <laughs> but after serving in the Hampton School District for 30 years, she thought as a dietitian, as, as, as a, a dietitian, she's not even a counselor. She, she was a nutrition in, in yeah. charge of nutrition for the district. Uh, her service with children all those years made her think that this was a bad idea. Huh. I was I did not find that persuasive, but she at least stood well, up and I, took responsibility for her vote. Sure. What I heard her say was, we cannot um, legislate how families have dinner That's right. together. That's um, right. We can't legislate how young women feel safe at home. And I sat there, I'm like, is this woman Republican? That's well, bizarre. are you kidding? It was me? outrageous yeah. to I compare having an abortion to having dinner. Right. Yeah. I, right. <laughs> just because we're not all having dinner at 6 o'clock and having um, family time. This may be the only time these people are called to account, so I will leave you to it. Okay. Um, <laughs> I just want to, um, Mike Egan just walked in. He's the producer of the show. Hi, Mike. How you doing? Good, good. good. Okay. Um, all right. So we're going to go the the um, House roll call first. Okay. David Babson. Um, he's in District 3, Carroll County. He voted against this. This is on 316 two of, of this year. Okay. That's right. He voted against this. And there's a lot of women that voted against yes. this, that, that claim they're Republican. Mm -hmm. And I'm Gail Berry, Hillsboro. Manchester. Uh, Yep, she voted against it. Julie Brown, Stratford County. Mm -hmm. Okay. Frank Case. And the reason I'm reading these names off, because if you're a constituent in any of these um, districts um, and towns, pay attention. Mm -hmm. Make some phone calls. Sure. You know, if you voted a Republican woman in there, you would expect that she would be passing a bill to protect families. They may and very well be called upon to vote on this again in yes, a few weeks. And, and it's important that you understand that. Um, our children are not in the hands of the state. They are our children. They're not, um, they're not the state's business. Mm -hmm. They're ours. Okay. Um, Frank Case, Rockingham County. Norma Champaign, Hillsborough County. Manchester. Manchester. Um, Richard Driscoll, Hillsborough. Richard Dwinell, Cheshire, Cheshire County. Stephanie Eaton, Grafton County. Mm -hmm. 
Carolyn Gargaz. Gar Gargaz. Mm -hmm. Um, Hillsborough County sounds like you might know who she is. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> she nods I can do my, I'll do my homework. <laughs> on, I'll do my background <laughs> checks on these people. Okay, um, Kenneth Gould, um, Rockingham. In fact, he's yeah, he's over in that area. We've got John Hunt, Cheshire County. Karen Hutchinson, Rockingham. Mm -hmm. It seems that you seem to know who she is yeah. as well. Okay, and you would think that women would understand that um, for some reason. Women want to be protectors, mm -hmm. and um, and they don't understand. I've worked in mental health, mm -hmm. and um, and I'll tell you that you have to be able to take a step back. It's not about you. It's about that that person. It's not about you. And a number of and the women, feelings. a number it's of the women whose names you've mentioned, have held office for quite some time. Yeah. Their constituents need to know what they're doing, and Absolutely. it may it may be true that the constituents do know. Well, I still invite you to examine mm -hmm. what examine the assumptions you have when you consider this bill. No, I okay. There's a thousand bills that go through that house every year. Is that right? Oh yes. Okay. Yes. Just that's something that we need to look at as well. I, anyway, so we got Neil Kirk, Hillsboro. We got Priscilla Lockwood, Merrimack. Mm -hmm. Irene. Messier. Oh no, she. Will, I'm sorry, I wrote that wrong. It's Al Aldia. Millen? Alita Millen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Paul Mursky. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Hillsboro and Belknap County. Then we have James Pilliod. Bel Belknap County, Paul Samard, Grafton, mm -hmm. Kyle Tasker, Rockingham, and then I can go through here and find out who wasn't there. Mm -hmm. I won't do that right now because we're getting down on time. So those are your Republicans that voted against this bill. If you're in that um, county, in that district, make some phone calls. On the House roll, it was Bob O'Dell. Mm -hmm. He voted against, and Nancy Stiles. That's right. Um, she voted against as well. And it, it appears that she is just pro-abortion. That's what I got out of her just listening to her at the Senate. I, 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 I walked away having no respect for this woman. I and invite I anyone women from District 24, call her and ask. This is something she should be called about. This is something a lot of people are reluctant to talk about because it is so private and so personal. But it we're is. talking about our daughters here. Was she? Okay. I'm sorry. Was she the one who made the dinner table? Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Um, you know, th this is something that, as, as awkward as it is, it might not be something you want to nail her for when you see her in the grocery store. But it is certainly <laughs> worth asking about. Yeah. However difficult it is to address. Yeah. And bef before I want to make sure people know that Cornerstone is going to be following this. And if you ever want to. Um, see what Cornerstone is doing or saying on this, nhcornerstone.org. Okay. We have a website and, and she's our, they're our on contact Facebook too. I mean, we, oh, they're everyone's on Facebook. On Facebook. Right. Yeah. If, if, yeah. if you find me on Mar Regime, you're going to find Ellen right. and you're going to find Cornerstone. So um, definitely. You know, yeah. this, this is, it's very exciting time because this is a very different legislature from what we've had before. There are alliances and coalitions that, you know, people who aren't used to working together are learning to work together. And this is something that brought a lot of people together who mm. aren't used to, you know, to cooperating. Mm. It's a very exciting time. Mm -hmm. this is, and this is an example of what you can do when you bring people from different backgrounds yeah, well, together, positive. different that's things to the <coughs> table. Yeah. This, this, this is a good bill. Yeah. So, so the people that um, put this bill together, mm -hmm. are they all Republicans? I didn't These look are all Republicans. Oh, they're all Republicans. Some of them come from a business background. Okay. Some of them have a very libertarian bent. Some of them are what you'd call old guard. Some of them have been legislators forever. Some were just elected. Hmm. Um, it, it's really quite a cross-section. Seeing who's walking in the room. <laughs> it's a busy <laughs> place. The, yeah, it is a busy place. Um, all right. Well, I'm I'm hoping that um, House Bill 329, folks. House Bill 329, <laughs> and I'm hoping that by Friday morning we'll yes. have news about it. Tomorrow night there'll probably be news breaking stories about mm -hmm. this. Pay attention because um, you know I think that what's happening in the in the state of New Hampshire, and I love this state, yeah. and um, what's happened that I have seen is that there's just too much. Um, government intervention, and then they're trying to come in and just take over. And I've, I can tell you that it's just horrible what I've seen and what I've heard in talking to people. I'm like, are you kidding me? Next week we're going to go over GALs, guardian at items. Okay. And if you, you probably know mm -hmm. about guardian mm -hmm. at items, they're they're like some of my favorite people up there that have <laughs> no ability to make decisions for children. So we are going to tear <laughs> this apart. Yeah. And um, you know, I'll get another guest to come in and talk about the guardian ad litems and the laws and how they're trained and what's happening in the um, family court system and how 
a guardian at litem can come into my home for one hour and make a decision. Mm -hmm. I'm, this is just sounds to me very socialistic behavior. You know, you're just going to come in and tell me exactly, you know, what you think. Worth you, discussing. It's worth uh -huh. discussing, uh -huh. absolutely. So um, that's what we're going to do with that next week. And if any of the viewers have any stories about guardian at litems, find me on Facebook, inbox me, because I want to know stories after story after story about these guys. Sure, they're out there. And women. Um, yeah, there is. Yeah. So regarding back to the bill, um, I want to thank you for coming on here today. Well, thanks for having me. And we're going to do this again. You know, we'll open it up yeah, again so. in the future. And uh, it's not an issue that's going to go away. That's, that's not true. Go away. That's it's the not. truth. So um, it was really nice to know that you were the woman sitting next to me up at the Senate <laughs> hearing. <laughs> <laughs> There's still a lot of bridges yet to be built on this. I don't expect everyone to agree yeah. on abortion, but come on, we, well, we, we I, can I come together on our on our kids. Right, it, it's children. We're not talking Roe v. Wade. Mm -hmm. Understand that woman has a right to choose, but this is our children, and and we have to protect them as parents. We have to we protect have that them. in common. And I think that s the schools think that they're doing the girls a favor or boys the favor mm -hmm. of, of protecting them, but when really it's just causing more damage. There's it's another show for you, Cheryl. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's well, another yeah, show. I know. They're they're causing more damage by keeping secrets mm -hmm. and not doing family intervention and helping with families and sometimes a family has to be turned upside down before mm -hmm. anything can be um, done with the family to get the help that it the family may need the family unit single mothers single fathers mm -hmm. whatever the case may be sometimes chaos after the chaos you have um, after the storm you have peace mm -hmm. and and you know what it is what it is when you've got some abuse situations or anything mm -hmm. going on those things need to be turned upside down and get counseling and, oh, I agree. and do and do the work to make these young women so they're able to go on in life and have um, healthy families, relationships. Healthy yeah. relationships. Healthy relationships. That's a big one for young women, yeah. you know, with what's going on in the world and the media. And I got a lot of stuff on Facebook. Did you read any of the comments on Facebook? I did. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. I, I I got a lot of comments, and it was, well, if a girl can have sex, then she's mature enough to have sex, and she mature enough to make that decision. Which is an Which asinine is argument. It is yeah. an asinine <laughs> argument. A girl's not even... Um, capable. Yeah. Of, I mean, they're just having sex because they're horny. I mean, I hate right. to say that, no, but this is the truth. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, and, you, and know what? it's you know what? It's an embarrassing thing. It's yeah. a very difficult thing for parents to confront. Well, Absolutely. But you know what? Look at, look at how homes are today. Mm -hmm. Moms and dads are out working mm -hmm. full time. Some more than that. A lot of moms are not home anymore mm -hmm. because they're out working. Yeah. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing because I'm, I'm it is pro, the way it is. Where, but it is what it is. Yeah. And so the children tend to just kind of go their own way. They're being raised by the internet. They're being raised by the internet <laughs> and cable TV. And yeah. you know what? I'll tell you, I didn't have cable for a couple of years, and I've never been happier not having cable. Now I do have cable, and that's fine. But what was on there was disgusting <laughs> as far as yeah. I'm concerned. I just have no, um, all the, the, the teenage shows. Oh, yeah, the, the teen pregnancy show. The teen pregnancy. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. If I'm you like, want to see how our society is degrading, watch MTV. Yeah. I mean, it's horrifying. So you're watching MTV then? No, but <laughs> you, can't, you can't escape it. I mean, you, you, you look at, on the cover of People magazine and you see something about, you know, this teen mom and yeah. oh, right. what happened to her, you know, someone who's on the show. And, and we're, we're glamorizing that kind of stuff now. It's really sick. Well, you know what? They're also glamorizing... Um, the young women that have had a baby, like they'll go to the prom and they have mm -hmm. the baby in the garbage can and then the girl's arrested and it's mm -hmm. and she has no feeling towards this child. Oh, Casey you know, Anthony? I have no idea. I, I yeah. see it on the news. I'm like, that's awful that that would happen. Mm -hmm. and, no, well, but there's no emotion for a child or the feeling. Yeah, let's turn that around. And it starts with, with us being concerned for yes, those girls. For, yeah. for, for the girls. You know, and right now, have right anybody now, notice a young woman's pregnant in high school? Right. You, you're not noticing as a how many teachers do they see yeah. a day? How many, you know, principal, counselors? How did this girl get by with having a belly and not, um, mm -hmm. and not being seen? I, I and, yet, and yet right now the law has a wedge between parents and daughters when it comes to a decision on what to do with a pregnancy. 329 is an attempt to kick that wedge out. Good. And Good. That, that's, we can only do what we can do today. Today. That's today's exactly. work. That's today's work. And you know what? I really want to um, just restate that um, you can call the governor's office tomorrow, you can yes. email, you can um, put your voice out there because, you know, we get this thing that, that we can't do anything. One voice can change mm -hmm. a world. Yes. One voice can make lots of changes. So when we stand yeah. up and say, you know what, I'm done with this and I'm going to stand up and fight, 
you know, we have the opportunity to that being in America with the First Amendment right. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have this TV show now. That's right. You know, because... And never let him say he didn't hear from you. And right. <laughs> and don't put it off. That's cause, right. Because the clock is ticking. That's 5 right. 5 p.m. tomorrow, it's right? It's 5 p.m. tomorrow, so I'll make yep. phone calls. And I know everyone's going to be watching the Bruins game tonight. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> but that's tonight. Tomorrow you can make that phone yeah, call. Yeah, tonight. So. Tomorrow, I hope they win. I won't be. Oh. I, won't be I hope the Bruins, the Bruins win. <laughs> oh, I'm watching. <laughs> I'm watching. I've got How long has it been since they won? 72, I think. I've got my Ray Bork jersey ready to go. <laughs> I'm going to be sitting in the living room with my kids. <laughs> that's cool. It'll be family bonding time. Oh, good. I good. hope they win because I like to see people around me happy. Yeah. That's, that's why? Uh, but I have no stake in So your girlfriend that. likes the Bruins then? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I've never discussed sports with her. <laughs> uh, maybe she does. So I don't what know. Are you, so, we, so what are you going to do then? What am I going to do tonight? Yeah. Well, when I leave here, I have to go do my FM radio show, Local Outbreak, okay. which airs on 100.1 The Planet. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then uh, I'll go home and record uh, Amsterdam, okay. which is on tonight at 11. Okay, I'm going to have to check all that stuff yeah, out. I see yeah. you posting on your Facebook page, but I have yeah. no idea what he's doing. So <laughs> Put it on Facebook. Slow I'm learner. Busy. I don't sleep much. I'm a type A workaholic. Are you? I am. Okay. All right, well, this is the Mar Regime. Um, you can find me on Facebook. Um, you can send in any thoughts that you have on uh, legislative bills going on, any reps that you want to talk about, any anything that's bothering you, inbox me, and we'll see what we can do with it to bring it to a show. And, um, again, thank you very much. Next week we're going to talk about guardian ad litems. We're going to have some people here, and we're going to discuss this serious situation in New Hampshire and family court. Okay? Sounds good. All right. Looking forward to it. Thanks, All right. Cheryl. Thank you very much.